kids welcome to today's bedtime stories and today's bedtime story is from the black lagoon Ad- adventures and this book is entitled the science fair from the black lagoon and this book was written by mike Thaler, illustrated by jared lee and so let's get into it so chapter one in the beginning Mrs. Green says that we're going to have a science fair and that we all have to invent something. I know all about inventors. I've seen them in the movies. <laughs> inventors are a bunch of clowns with crazy hairdos, pop bottle glasses, and baggy white coats. They are always trying to figure out ways to turn the world upside down. Some inventors and scientists make monsters like Dr. Frankenstein. Some turn themselves into monsters like Jacqueline Hyde who thought two heads were better than one. What about Dr. Buzz? He turned himself into a giant fly. He was flying high until he got zapped by the SWAT team. Or Dr. Dylan who turned himself into a giant pickle. Then there are those scientists who just grow things in the test. Then there are those scientists who just grow things in test tubes like prime slime, glob blob, and muck yuck. They always get stuck late at the office and are totally absorbed in their work. I wonder if I'll get I wonder if I'll get wrapped up in my invention. Chapter 2 Invention Intention What will I invent? When I get home, I put on my thinking cap. The wheel's been done. It's been around for years. And someone's had the bright idea to make the light bulb. It's not fair. All the good inventions have been invented already. Eric calls while I'm trying to figure it all out. He says he's going to make a Frankenstein monster. He wants to know whether I want to collect body parts with him. I ask him where he's going to get them. He says that he's going to a body shop or a parts department. I tell him that I've got problems of my own. But I hope someone gives him a leg up, lends him a hand, or helps him get ahead. (laughs) That's funny. When I hang up, I'm still scratching my head. Then Derek calls. He says that he's going to make himself invisible. Out of sight, I say. Yeah, I'll be able to get into the movies for free. Steal lots of lots of bases in Little League and hang out in the teacher's lounge. I tell him that I'll see him later. I still don't know, don't have a clue what to do. Soon Doris calls and announces that she's going to win first prize with her invention. She tells me there have been oodles of great women scientists. Name one, I say. Madame Curious, she answers. What will she, what did she do? I ask. She discovered radiators, Doris replies. Then I ask Doris what her project is, and she asks me if I have security clearance. I don't think so, I say, so she hangs up. I'm still scratching my head when Freddy calls. He has a big time idea. He's going to make a time machine and send himself into the future so he'll be old enough to drive. Freddie also tells me that Penny is making a telescope and Randy is building a rocket. I've got no idea what I'm going to do. Maybe I'll clone myself. Who knows? Chapter 3. The Class Clone If I had a clone, life would be twice as much fun. He could do my homework for me, He could get up early and go to school while I stayed in bed. He could do my chores around the house and 
always eat my broccoli and spinach at dinner. He could even take my piano lessons and practice while I play baseball. Or he could be on my little league team and help me make double plays. He could go to bed early while I stay up late. It would be great. Plus, my clone could go to the dentist for me. He could get all my vaccinations and take my medicine when I get sick. Boy, if I had a clone, life would be twice as much fun for me. Chapter 4 Dr. Brain Mom asks me to take out the garbage. Where is my clone when I need him? Then I have an idea. If I'm going to be a scientist, I have to look like one. So I mess up my hair. Good start. I put on my trick glasses with the funny eyeballs. Even better. Then I put on my mom's white coat. I'm there. I look in the mirror and see a scientist looking back. Eureka! I've arrived! I shout. There's a zinging in my brain. Now I have lots of ideas. I can, I can make telephones out of two tin cans connected by a string. It would work for local calls. For long distance calls, I'll just get a longer string. I could make anti-gravity slippers out of banana peels, eyeballs out of eggshells, or roller skates out of apple cores. Maybe I'll build a rocket, but that would make a lot of racket. I could create gum that quietly chews itself while you're in class. Or I could even make a TV remote that opens a book. I could make a robot that rows a rowboat. I'll call him Robert, the rowboat rob, the rowboat robot. It's a good tongue. It's a good tongue twister, anyway. I'm too confused to choose. Cloning still leads the pack, but maybe I'll make a laugh machine. Chapter five, a sci-fi. I turn on the TV and start watching the sci-fi channel. Mom tells me to do my homework. I tell her that I'm doing research. There's a movie on called Invasion of the Potty Snatchers. It's about these Martians that came to Earth to steal all the toilets. I hope it was, I hope it has a happy ending. <laughs> At the end of the movie, the Martians flip their lids, learn to play kazoos and join a Martian band. They wind up playing at halftime in the Super Bowl, where they're flushed with excitement. <laughs> Next, there's a movie about a mad scientist, Dr. Midas. Everything he touches turns to gold. So he runs for president, shakes a lot of hands, and becomes very rich. Unfortunately, he makes a bad investment when he picks, when he picks his nose. <laughs> After that, there's another movie called Extraterrestrial about a hen-pecked husband who creates a giant chicken. Right before he takes over the world, he drowns in a large omelette. The police suspect foul play. <laughs> Next, there is The Brainiac about a guy who turns ants into giants. It's no picnic for him when they eat him out of house and home, and then eat him. He should have turned them into uncles. <laughs> Mom grabs the remote and beams me up to bed. If I only had my clone. Chapter 6. Bus Bustle. The next morning on the school bus, all the kids are talking about their science projects. Eric's down because he couldn't come up with one body part. No one lifted a finger to help him. I can still see Derek, so he's not doing so well. Doris isn't talking much about her colossal, her colossal invention, but, but Freddie says, that he's making progress. He's one 
whole day into the future since yesterday. Penny is still working on her telescope with no end in sight. I tell her to get a movie magazine where she's, where she's sure to see lots of stars. Rand is still trying to get his project off the ground. And I'm still undecided. It's between cloning myself and making a laugh machine. It's down to cloning or clowning. <laughs> Chapter 7, A Blast from the Past. In the library, Mrs. Beamster tells us about great scientists from the past. A guy named Galeoyo said the Earth was not the center of the universe. He made a lot of self-centered people mad. <laughs> when Christopher Columbus said the Earth was round, a lot of squares gave him a hard time. Another guy called Listermint made people angry when he told them to wash their hands to kill germs. I think that he was in Germany. And a scientist named Pasteur washed milk to get rid of parasites. I think that he was from Paris. Another scientist named Newton was hit by a fig and invented the fig Newton. Ben Franklin was shocked when everyone told him to go fly a kite. And Alexander Graham and Alexander Graham Bell invented invented graham crackers for your belly. Mrs. Beamster says that everything we have today came from someone's imagination and all the things we'll have tomorrow will come from ours. Boy, am I pumped. Chapter 8. The Name Game. I'm so excited. I check out a book called how inventions and other things got their names. It's very interesting. For instance, the guy who first ate an, 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 ate an artichoke was, was named Artie and he choked. The wheel was named because its inventor rode it down a hill and yelled, Wee! And his best friend said, Wheel! have an awesome time with this. Nomad scientists invented sandals for walking in the desert. They also invented sandpaper and sandwiches. Maybe I'll figure out an easy way to clone ice cream and I'll call it the ice cream clone. <laughs> Chapter nine, too many me's. On the school bus ride home, I still can't decide whether I should clone myself or build a laugh machine. While I look out the bus window, I start to daydream about the science fair, but it's more like a daymare. I'm running on the playground, it's a bright sunny day, I'm feeling good, but all of a sudden I bump into me. Why don't you look where I'm going, I ask. Why don't you? I reply. We begin to argue and a third me comes over to settle the fight, but he agrees with both of us. So we call over a fourth me. He's no help either. And soon we're surrounded by a crowd of me's. I ask, why don't we go play basketball? But I can't seem to agree with myself. <laughs> Eleven me's want to play baseball. And I just want to make, and I just want to wake up. Suddenly, the bus horn honks, and all the other me's vanish. I wipe my brow and decide not to clone myself. I look back into the window for a second opinion, but luckily, I agree with myself. <laughs> Chapter 10 Genius at when I get off the bus, I go straight home from school and get to work. I realize that if I cloned myself, I would have to share my allowance. Bummer. So I'm going, to f so I'm going for the laugh machine. I mess up my hair, put on my crazy eyeball glasses, 
my white love coat and go into my laboratory. Maybe I'll just begin with a giggle machine or a chuckle box and work my way up. I squirt my dad's shaving cream on top of my head. I rub my mom's lipstick on the end of my nose. I look, I look in the mirror and chuckle. But when I go outside and show my dog, Tailspin, he just runs and hides. I show my mom and she just tells me to go wash my face for dinner. Oh well, back to the drawing board. Chapter 11, A Tough Road to Hope. After dinner, I work late into the night. At 9.30 p.m., mom tells me to go to bed. I still don't have my laugh machine finished and tomorrow is a science fair. When I fall asleep that night, I have a scream dream. It's the day of the fair. All the kids are in the gym with their projects. Eric's, bonds, Eric's monster is 10 feet tall and sewn together. It looks like a cross between Coach Kong and Mrs. Beamster. It has a bolt in its neck and an outlet for its belly button. Eric tells it jokes to keep it in stitches. <laughs> I don't see Derek, but I guess that's a good sign. Doris's project is covered with a blanket and labeled top secret. Penny's telescope looks like the one at the looks like the one at the planetarium. I bet her father helped her. Rand is climbing aboard his rocket, and Freddie pulls the lever on his time machine. There's a pop, bop, and boom. When the smoke clears, we're all standing in the future. <laughs> Freddie has a beard and is old enough to drive, but there are no more cars. In fact, there are no more streets, just sidewalks everywhere. Bummer. There was just too much pollution, so now everyone has to walk. There's a walk through fast food place, a walk by bank, and walk in movie theaters. Even NASCAR is NAS walk. Freddie is sad. I guess now it's time for my laugh machine. I wind it up and it says, ho, 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 but no one else is laughing. They all just walk away. I wake up and roll out of bed. It's Saturday, time for the science fair. Chapter 12, Brainstorm. While I'm brushing my teeth, I suddenly have it. Yes, it will work. I high five the mirror and get to work. By 11 a.m., I'm putting on the finishing touches. I print laugh machine on my t-shirt. The science fair is at 1 p.m. I put on my backpack and I'm ready to roll. I sit in the van and feel like I'm driving into the future. If I win first prize at the science fair, I'll go on to become a famous physicist and invent lots of neat stuff. <laughs> and my best invention will be my lazier ray. When people get excited and want to fight, I'll zap them with my lazier ray and they'll just yawn and go back to bed. I'll call it the have a nice day ray and I will win the Nobel Pizza Prize. We pulled up to we pulled up at school. I get out of the van and walk into the gym with confidence. <laughs> Chapter 13. Our invention convention. All the kids are standing by their projects. There are lots of cool things to see. I hope people like my laugh machine. Instead of Frankenstein, Eric brought in his dog, Butch, who has a bolt in his collar. I see Derek is not invisible, but he's handing out blindfolds to everyone. Put them on, 
he smiles. We do. Now can you see me? He asks. No, we answer. Eureka! He shouts. <laughs> Penny has taped together 10 toilet paper tubes and hung a paper star on the end. Randy pushes a button and his rocket falls over. It's rocket roll! Freddy has a sign that his time machine is in the future and won't be back until tomorrow. And Doris still isn't showing her project to anyone. I guess it's time for my laugh machine. I turn around and open my backpack. I put on my googly eyes, my vampire fangs, my picnic plate ears, and my propeller beanie. I twirl my, pro my propeller, stick my finger in my nose, spin around three times, cross my eyes, press my belly button, and burp. Everyone laughs, even Mrs. Green. She awards me a special prize for the silliest invention. <laughs> hey, science is a blast. Maybe next year, We'll have our science fair on the moon, and I'll be an astronaut. This is the end of the book. Wow. <laughs> that book had me laughing. I hope you enjoy the story, and I just wish you a happy sleep. This was a Ladybird presentation. For more exciting resources for kids, go to kidsmedianetwork.com. Thank you for listening.